Okay, so this is going to be a video about how my electric bicycle works, um, how it was put together, the thought process that went into designing the various aspects of it, and uh, some of the problems that I faced while working on it, and there were many, but that's okay. So, to start out with, this is just a standard uh, 21 speed Walmart bicycle. Um, it's had it for a few years. It's got 26 inch wheels and um, it's about maybe seven or eight years old. Uh, it's a good bike. I have a different seat on it than it came with. It's a little bit wider than the original seat, but that uh, doesn't really make a difference. This motor is a 36 volt, 750 watt DC motor. It came out of an electric scooter. Uh, that I had a few years ago. It's uh, model MY1070 JX Motor Co. Uh, it's some company out of China that probably isn't in business anymore, but it's a uh, max speed is rated at 2500 RPM. Uh, voltage is rated at 36 volt DC and the rated current is 27 amps and the output is supposed to be 750 watts. And uh, for those of you who are curious, 750 watts equates to roughly 1.1 horsepower. So it's not exceedingly powerful, but it does what I want it to do. Um, and you'll notice it's mounted on a piece of three quarter inch plywood, and this is in turn attached to an aluminum uh, bike ra luggage rack type deal. And uh, originally the motor was affixed with these uh, these are this is actually strap steel that I bent with a torch and a pair of pliers and um, It was originally bolted using fender washers and carriage bolts directly to this aluminum frame um, but Because of the way I had it designed originally the torque that was generated by the chain caused it to bend the frame and that was bad and that caused it to break and some other things happened and I had the whole thing taken apart for a few weeks um, but I got a got an idea to basically take it and shore it up I have it uh, stacked up here with the four fender washers on each side to give it some clearance so the motor is uh, parallel to the board which is parallel to um, you know an, an imaginary plane running through the bike along uh, an XY axis if we're considering X, Y, and Z, or however you want to think of it. Um, but just to keep everything orthogonal, or as orthogonal as possible, I have it on this piece of wood. And this piece of wood is attached to this aluminum frame with these, uh, this is actually hanger tape, it's, it's really thin metal, so I have it doubled up and uh, screwed into the wood. So it's got about eight, eight or nine of those little brackets, um, keeping it on there, and I have a slot cut in it for the chain, obviously. The chain itself is a number 25 roller chain. I bought it off of Amazon. It's uh, made out of hardened steel. Uh, I don't know the exact measurement of it, but it's um, basically just, it's just little, it's like tiny bike chain, basically. But um, I uh, was looking it up just to make sure I was um, going the right route, and I think the tensile strength is something like a thousand pounds or eleven hundred pounds, so um, nowhere near the breaking point for what I'm doing, unless I was, you know, trying to tow it or if I was using a really, really big motor, which I'm not. Um, but anyways, this drives it down in a counterclockwise rotation, and it loops around this bottom gear here, and uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see. This is actually um, a 65 tooth sprocket, which is sandwiched between two pieces of sheet metal. Um, this sheet metal is actually cut out from old computer cases that I had laying around out back. And um, I just took some snips and cut some rough circles out. And I basically did that because originally, when it was just the gear itself, um, the chain would ride off of the gear and get stuck, and that caused some problems. And um, that that's uh, actually one of the major design flaws of this entire setup, is um, the, the way that I actually attached the lower sprocket to the wheel. 
um, I'm gonna come around back. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, but you can see there, that is a little flat piece of strap steel, and those are screws, and I did the same thing on the bottom, and they're bolts with nuts on the end of it, and some lock washers to keep it in place. But that is actually attached directly to the spokes on the wheel, which, as you might imagine, is not very stable at all. And, um, yeah, I'm not particularly proud of that, but it was the quick and dirty option that suddenly became the sort of go-to option because it works really well. Um, I didn't want to completely, you know, completely rebuild the back wheel. I didn't want to have to buy a um, adapter plate for the sprocket or another sprocket and possibly get the wrong one uh, because, you know, that you have to buy all this stuff online. There's not a lot of stores in the immediate area that sell the kind of stuff that I need. So I was working with what I had and uh, that's what you got to do a lot of the times, you know, just work with what you got. You got stuff lying around, um, you know, old parts, screws, nuts, bolts, things like that. If you can avoid buying it, you know, just use what you have. Use your use your imagination. If it doesn't work, you're not out any money, you know, or as much money depending on what you're doing. But um, you know, anyways, and if if it's broke, you know, fix it. Don't don't get a new one, man. That's just stupid. Anyways, so it's a good motor. Uh, we'll go down here. This is actually an interesting, uh, I say interesting, it's kind of shitty. Um, this is the tensioner for this chain. And um, the, the chain is uh, a little bit longer than it needs to be. And the reason for that is, like I just described, the way this is mounted on here, it's impossible to get it perfectly centered. And so as it goes around, it um, doesn't make a perfect circle if you were to attach a pen to it or a marker and let it draw on a whiteboard. It would make an elliptical shape. And, um, you know, from, from that standpoint, you know, obviously the chain is going to slacken and tighten, slacken and tighten as the wheel rotates. And if the wheel is rotating a couple, you know, dozen rotations per minute or however fast it's going, that's going to cause the chain to flop back and forth pretty, pretty hard. And that's not what you want. So this tensioner keeps it uh, taut, or as taut as I can. I have a fender washer stuck behind this as well to keep it from riding off the back of this little sprocket. And then these are just uh, pull springs, and um, those are attached to a bolt. This bolt is attached to a piece of flat steel, which is attached to another piece of flat steel, which is sandwiched around the aluminum frame. Um, so you, you can you can kind of see how I've gone about this. This has sort of been a seat of seat of your pants type engineering, but it works. Um, if you watch my other video, you can see it, it works decently well. Um, one of the problems, of course, is uh, this back length of chain loves to rub against the spring, and uh, I'll fix that eventually. All I need to do is get a bolt right here that's about a quarter inch longer than the one I have in place. So. Uh, that's a that's another problem to work on, um, but for right now it's okay. Anyways, so that's how it goes. Now let's see how the electrical system works. So this big gray block is a battery, and uh, it's actually a battery pack. There are 100 uh, 10 by 10, 100 uh, 18650 lithium ion batteries in here that I got from various places. I had a couple of old laptops and um, some other stuff that I took apart um, that I had lying around in my room for years. And uh, the, the batteries work pretty well. Lithium ion batteries uh, are, are very good. Um, I was originally thinking about using lead acid, but lead acid obviously being made of lead are significantly heavier and lithium is uh, the lightest metal. And uh, lithium ion has a really good energy density. Um, but these are used batteries, and um, I'll see if I can get some shots of the uh, interior of this to show you guys how I put it together.
but it's got a pretty good pretty good power in it. Um, it's arranged in 10 rows of 10 columns of a battery, so we're uh, hitting 30, uh, optimally we're hitting 42 volts, but nominally we're hitting about 39, 38 volts, which I think is, is what it's at right now. And, um, you know, I need, I need to buy a charger for it. I haven't done that because I've been just charging it by running the motor with my pedals. It's basically, you know, like a stationary bike. Um, but anyways, I digress. And, uh, so let me see. That connects to this speed controller. This right here is sort of the heart of the whole contraption. This is a, um, this is a Chinese made. Everything's made in China these days, of course. But um, this is just a electronic speed controller designed for a 36 volt motor. Um, it says DC 36 V 30 amp. And um, you know, that's just its power rating. Nothing really to say about that. It's a silver box that I have zip tied to the frame here. Um, and the speed is controlled by this throttle here. If you saw my other video, it's just a thumb throttle. You can grab onto the handlebar here and push your thumb down. And it's just got a spring in it that causes it to go back when you let off. And uh, it gets up to about probably 20 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. Um, works works really well, all things considered. So, um, yeah, anyways, let me see if I can go ahead and flip it over for you guys and we'll get the motor going and you can sort of see how the gears work up close. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I got it upside down here for you and we're gonna go ahead and connect the battery. Where's the connector for it? We're gonna connect the battery to the speed controller. I didn't put an on-off switch on this because on-off switches are for lazy people this is the real deal way to do it. Just get a big old connector, big old 50 amp, 600 volt connector, and plug it in every time you need to use it. So, good enough for me. Uh, and we got our lights on, showing that we have power. So, and there we go, okay. So, you can see, like I was describing earlier, I'm gonna run the motor, and you can uh, see down here, these springs are gonna stretch and uh, stretch and go back as the wheel rotates because of the way that I have it mounted. It's uh, oscillating uh, up and down, which, you know, isn't perfect. And uh, there will probably be a fourth revision of the entire back section. This upper part is probably good, but this lower part um, needs some work. So let me run it real quick for you. And you can listen to it. It's making a um, pretty nice scraping noise there. That's the chain hitting the spring. And um, it's going back and forth, like I said. It's keeping on there pretty well. But if you look at... Uh, let me stop it here. So if you look at... Just keep try to keep your eye on one of the edges of this and watch it go around. It's not perfectly centered, and that's probably the biggest problem with the entire thing is trying to trying to work with stuff that I don't exactly have the equipment and facilities for. Uh, we'll go see this here. You can see, I don't know if you can see, there's some scraping going on back here. So, you can see that without uh, any weight on it, really, to prevent it from accelerating too quickly, the chain has jumped off of its little tensioner gear and gotten stuck on the wrong side of the washer. And that's what was happening before I put the washer on there. But um, because this is so off-centered, and it, eh, it, it's not terribly bad, but it was better, because this is off-center, 
it's causing the chain to have more and more slack on the, uh, I guess, the downswing of each rotation. So that's causing a bit of a problem for the chain staying in place. But, of course, the other side of that coin is when it go and goes all the way back around, it's very taut. Um, and that's, you know, that's going to be what the fourth iteration of this is designed to fix. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's, uh, that's about all, and hopefully this was educational for you. And if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, leave a comment below.